Hello, I'm Greg with Primal Rights. I'm out here defending a local asset. There is an airport right behind me, and this airport is in jeopardy as a result of a prairie dog infestation here on the adjoining pasture. So I've been out here already two separate times working on this dog town, and we've eliminated in excess of 530 prairie dogs from here but there's still quite a few that need to get taken out so that's what i'm doing here i'm set up on the mobile shooting platform or otherwise known as the roof of my pickup and i set up just so i can kind of peek over the hilltops in front of me and that gives me an opportunity to get a good vantage point here and a uh, little elevation helps with that sometimes and this is going to be the first in a series of videos that we're going to call dog town tactics now the tactic that i'm going to share with you today has a lot of crossover with a lot of your different shooting styles but particularly anybody that's doing high volume shooting that's no mystery when you're out shooting colony varmints that your your shot cadence is going to be high generally well if the shooting is good anyway <laughs> and uh, that means a lot of shooting across a short period of time that's going to heat everything up pretty tremendously here in this rifle system now the brass that we use for these cartridge cases are an extremely good conductor of heat and if we let our ammunition heat up too much well then that's going to create all kinds of problems for us the tactic that i'm going to share with you today is to not chamber your round until you're ready to fire now this is important because if you just been doing a long string of fire and you've got a bunch of heat in your system already continuing to shoot is going to make that even worse but in a colony varmint situation, sometimes we're going to go ahead and tear our barrels up. We don't care. We need to get some shooting done. And so the key here is to not chamber your round until you're ready to actually make the shot. So we want to prolong that as late as we can. And that's going to keep as much heat out of that cartridge as we can. Now it's important also to keep your ammunition in a shaded area if you can. Make sure it's not baking in the sun in a closed ammo box or something. The main contention here is a lot of guys when they're out doing this, I see them close the bolt and then they sit and wait. They acquire their target, they get all set up for the shot, they compute their firing solution and everything. Well, like two or three minutes has gone by and that cartridge has went nuclear inside that chamber. They chambered it into an already blazing hot chamber in the first place. Well, while that's happening, all that powder, that propellant inside that case is getting super hot. It's going to change its velocity as a result. Then the cartridge case itself, because it's so hot and the bullet has become so hot, the surface lubricity between the bullet and the barrel, the between the bullet and the case, the characteristics of how the case is going to behave, that brass is no longer behaving like the brass that we just chambered a while ago. So because of these temperature variances, it's going to produce a wildly unpredictable shot. When we're out here shooting these colony varmints, a lot of times we're shooting a very small target at a quite large distance. And so the precision here matters a lot. And if you want to make very precise shots, you're going to have to make sure that you can perfect this technique. Now I see a prairie dog right over here. He's very close, but we're going to range him nonetheless because this is exactly the process that I would go through. He's only 115 yards. So this is going to be kind of a joke here. Now I've got a pretty warm barrel here already. Now if I had a firing solution to dial in, this is where I would do it. Obviously 114 yards. This guy's getting centered up. I'm going to hold a tenth for wind because we do have a fair bit of wind out here. But otherwise I would dial a firing solution in here and then I'd get on the rifle and uh, get my parallax set correctly. Like pretty good about right there. Now once I've got him all acquired here, I get my firing position set perfectly. And then I want to close the bolt and get this done without losing my sight of him. And then I want to get this shot fired quickly. Okay. So that's exactly what this looks like in real time. I get that bolt closed and I get this round down range and I mean right quick. I don't want that round sitting in that hot chamber 
getting baked into oblivion and changing my interior ballistics all around. I need this thing to fly predictably and at the correct velocity. I need everything to go perfect in order to hit these little guys way out there. All right, let's take a look at that again. We'll try a different one here. Okay, got one out there at 182. So, we'll get him dialed in here. And that's that. Now, it's critical to have a really good action here. Now, I prefer my actions to be gone through by Taylor at Stratton Custom Rifles. And so once he's done going through these things, they're as smooth as butter. And the ignition is timed perfectly, and any of the deficiencies that the action had initially have been taken care of. That allows me to get in and out of battery with these things extremely effortlessly. So because I can do that so quickly and it doesn't disrupt the position of the rifle, I can really go to town on these things out here. And that's all there is to this, folks. If you've got a chamber that's hot, or if, even if you haven't been shooting and the rifle's been sitting out in the sun, and you've got the chamber heated up, the barrel itself is heated up, you're going to want to make sure that you do not leave that loaded round sitting in the chamber for any period of time. Now, if I close the bolt and I discover that for whatever reason the shot's not there, I'll just go ahead and eject it, take it out, load it back in the magazine, and uh, get ready for my next engagement. But what I won't do is let that thing sit in there for any amount of time. It really does change how the round behaves pretty dramatically. Now, the more finicky cartridge that you use, the more finicky your rifle is, and the more finicky your load is, the worse this situation will be. Now, we're blessed to have some pretty forgiving cartridges, all things considered. But this is something still that you should be mindful of if you're trying to shoot small enough and distant enough. Now, if you've watched some of my previous content on brass life and brass characteristics, you know that this has a permanent effect. So when you put this cartridge in a hot chamber and then you wait a while and the propellant is getting heated up, when you fire it, it's going to produce a higher pressure. That higher pressure, if you're on the edge of your node in the first place, well, it could be overpressure, and it could actually permanently damage the brass. And so this is one of those things where if you don't pay attention to this and you just go ahead and fire this thing after it's been sitting in your chamber forever, you could cause that brass to be pulled out of rotation because you experienced heavy bolt lift on that particular shot. So it's not just, hey, you might miss what you're shooting at, and that's obvious by at this point in the video, but it's also that there are going to be effects on your batch of brass here and that you're going to tear your batch of brass up. So if you expect this brass to be high performing and do its level best for you, then you're not going to want to chamber this thing and let it sit in there. Now this week, just like last week, I'm coming to you from the book of Matthew, and this is one of the Gospels. And this is Jesus speaking again, and we're doing Matthew 7, verse 6 here. Now this is one of my favorite verses in all of the Bible, and that is because as a teacher, as an instructor, one of the hardest things to deal with is criticism. And once upon a time, I really let that criticism get me down because it's no fun to have people not liking what you're doing and <laughs> really being mean to you. You know, that's just not a very fun thing. But when I read this verse, it made so much sense to me because it explained something that I had been doing wrong for basically my entire life. And those of you that have known me for a long period of time, you probably have seen a dramatic change in my behavior. I no longer try to convince people to agree with me. Um, instead, I don't care if you agree with me or not. <laughs> I'm going to say what I believe to be true, and then I'll leave you to have whatever opinion you may about it. And that all stems from my, uh, my appreciation of this verse. And it, and it says here, and this is Jesus speaking, 
Don't waste what is holy on people who are unholy. Don't throw your pearls to pigs. They will trample the pearls, then turn and attack you. And if you're more of a fan of the King James Version, uh, the King James Version here reads a little differently, but it's pretty much the same thing. Give not that which is holy unto the dogs, neither cast ye your pearls before swine, lest they trample them under their feet, and turn again and rend you. Now, rend is basically uh, to devour, okay? Um, so that is not a good thing. So here is Jesus giving us a stern warning that if we are trying to give precious information or precious knowledge to people that are just not very good, if they're just not very good people, or as Jesus calls them here, swine, then you're going to have a very difficult time with that, and at the very least. And uh, best case scenario, they'll just be upset and they'll say something unkind to you and, and they'll go off. It can turn ugly really fast. If you're really trying to convince people and you take a vested interest in trying to get someone that disagrees with you to change their mind and then agree with you, you can find yourself in some very unpleasant predicaments and you're flirting around with Satan here in a massive way because this is one of the avenues that he's going to try to get at us. He's going to try to attack us here because we want to be loved and we would like it if everybody loved us. But that's just not reality. We're not meant to be loved by everybody here on this earth. But instead, we are loved by God. We're loved by God, and that has to be enough for us. If we're staying true to who we are, if we are truly pursuing what we believe to be his path for us, then generally speaking, we're doing exactly what we're supposed to do. And seeking the love of others might not be the best thing for you, because a lot of times those people that you're seeking the approval of are going to be extremely fickle and they might love you the one minute, but then they will hate you the very next minute, depending on how they feel that day. Whereas God loves you every single minute of every single day. And if you can concentrate on that love and focus on his approval, make sure you're adhering to the guidelines that he's given us then you can feel much better about yourself because then you know, well, the scripture states everywhere that people in this world are flawed and we're imperfect, myself included. And so we're generally just not very good at providing love. But God is perfect at providing love. And so our attention should be on that. It shouldn't be on trying to win the people of this world over to our way of thinking. Rather, it should be spent on trying to mold ourselves in the image of perfection that was personified in Jesus Christ. Our focus should be there, making sure that we're being dutiful with the gifts that God has given us. That freedom that this verse brings to alleviate your responsibility in trying to convince other people can be one of the most freeing things that you could experience as a Christian. Because once you're willing to let other people think whatever they're going to think about you, you don't have to carry the burden of that anymore. You get to be exactly who you believe God made you to be, and then you don't have to suffer carrying around the baggage of other people's hate. Because if they're not picking up what you're putting down instead, if they're trampling it under their feet, then you have no responsibility to engage with those people, not in any capacity whatsoever. So folks, if you're struggling with this and, and you're really trying to get other people to behave in a certain way or do certain things or believe a certain thing, you really should just put all that down. Instead, you just say what you believe to be true in the way that you're led to say it and then they are the ones that decide whether or not they are swine or not. We don't even have to say that, oh, they're swine, you know, they're, they're dirty hogs, they're, they just are not worthy of this. We, we don't have to decide that because 
those people in the world are going to decide that for themselves. The people that always have something negative to say, people making nasty comments all the time, those are the kinds of people that we're talking about here. And we don't have to go out of our way to search them out. They will make themselves known everywhere you go. You will know from a distance whether or not they're walking with Christ or without. Now, another really important element here is the concept of forbidden knowledge. There were several different times in Scripture where it said that God clouded the minds of people and made it so that they couldn't understand something. And you have to take a humble approach to your relationship with God here, because if you try too hard to get someone else to understand something, there's nothing worse than them starting to understand it when they're not meant to, when they're not supposed to understand it, because you're going against the will of God here, and you're fighting against something that they're not ready to receive. The knowledge, the gift of your knowledge is not something that they are supposed to have right now. And so when you fight against this and you're trying to force someone else into believing what you believe or convince them into a certain way, you're actually going against God's wishes. Because if God wished for those people to have the knowledge that you're trying to present, then that person would come to you with questions. They would come to you looking for a deeper understanding. They would be polite. They would be excited to learn what it is that you have to say. And so when someone is not willing to learn from any of the things that I'm teaching, they don't want the value of my experience. And that I think that that is actually wonderful. And when I feel that resistance from someone, when I'm talking with them, I will very matter-of-factly end the conversations. I'll say something like, I appreciate the question, and I appreciate the fact that you've come here to try to help, but I think we're at an impasse here. I just don't think that we're going to mesh together very good. And so I'd recommend that you go find someone else to learn from here, someone that's more in tune with your personality type. Now, it's very obvious when I say something like that, like, hey, I'm not really, we're not jiving here, okay? I'm not feeling it at all, and I don't think we're going to get along, okay? And I'm not willing to try to convince you to try to change who you are to get along with me. But rather, I would have you go away and uh, go find someone else that you do get along with, that you do respect, that you do want to learn from. And folks, I'm telling you, since I made that choice, there's been so much more peace in my life. Because I've realized, hey, it's not my responsibility to make sure everyone knows everything that I know. Instead... Those people that come to me to learn what I know, that's a blessing to them. Everyone that wants to learn something from you guys, when you teach someone something, that's a blessing to them. Now, it's also true that when someone comes to me to learn, that's a blessing to me because this path that God has me on and teaching the wonders of the precision rifle world here, that is my purpose. And so, I get to fulfill my purpose by interacting with those people that are wanting to learn. Now, I couldn't fulfill my purpose very well if nobody listened, <laughs> if I never got along with anybody. God has this funny way of sending everyone into my life at exactly the right time so that I can execute my purpose on exactly those people that can benefit the most. So everyone that needs what I have to offer, has God has this way of directing them to right to me. And it doesn't matter what I'm doing. It's not some elaborate marketing effort that brought them here. No, it was some conversation that they had with somebody else that maybe saw something that I put out. And conversely, I will find myself being brought into their lives at exactly the right moment as well. Folks, far too often... For it to be a coincidence, which I don't believe in coincidences anymore. I really don't. And so th this is the nature of how God works in our lives. And this is why it's so important that we don't force things on people that aren't for us. People that don't like us. People that just aren't, they have no interest in anything that we have to say and they would only wish us harm. It's important that we never try to convince those people to care for us. Because there's enough love and care for us coming directly from God himself. And the rest of the love that we get, think of it as a bonus. 
when you get a chance to interact with someone that appreciates you, that understands your value, just think of that as a little extra. It's just a blessing that God's giving both of you. When someone comes into our lives, that's a blessing for us and a blessing for them. And when you get a chance to have genuine interactions in that way, when you're not worried about protecting your own interests so much, when you're not worried about protecting and manufacturing an image to make sure other people like you. And I know there's a lot of you out there that behave in that way, and you you really shouldn't. And I've caught a lot of flack over the years about the way I operate. I never really have cared if someone likes me or not. And uh, I know a lot of you can testify to that. I probably was a little too far on that side of the spectrum over the years. And I never have cared what people thought, but I did seek their love. I did seek their affirmation and I much too frequently. And, and so I can tell you that the amount of peace that I have in my interactions now is significantly greater than it ever has been because I can be genuinely me without feeling really angry and hostile. And I can say, well, okay, well, so you disagree. Great. Go do it somewhere else. <laughs> I don't have to be upset about it. Whereas before, when I was carrying around that desire for affirmation and that, that, that desire for those other people's love, well, that was creating all kinds of negative emotions. It was creating a ton of problems within me internally where I just, I didn't like that. It was really frustrating. Now when people don't like me, it's like, well, get in line. You know, <laughs> it's a long line started when I was born and it's just going to keep growing as time goes on. The more that I be me, the more that I say what I think and the more opportunity the world has to judge me for it, and that's fine. I'm perfectly okay with it, and you should be okay with it too. Because you shouldn't not be you just for the sake of having other people think that you're okay. No, instead, you should be exactly who you are in spite of what anyone says. As long as you're following the scripture correctly, right? You don't get to be evil and then just not care about what anyone thinks. Because this only applies if you are living a dutiful Christian life. If you're trying to, and I say Christian, I'm not talking about religion here, folks. I'm talking about following the teachings of Jesus Christ as closely as you can manage. As long as you're doing that, you are free from the trappings of this world. You're free from what other people think and say about you in your pursuit of that particular walk with Christ. So free yourselves by making this choice to go to Jesus. Live the way he'd have you live. Say what he'd have you say. Be your genuine self, regardless of what anyone thinks. And then because of this scripture, you can realize that this is not your responsibility so when you say something that someone doesn't like, you don't have to care about that. Now, sometimes the truth will hurt their feelings. And you know what? If the truth does hurt their feelings, well, it probably should. <laughs> okay. There's a lot of people over the years that I've tried to get to stop doing stupid things that are damaging their life and separating them from Christ. And a lot of times that was very uncomfortable for them. They didn't like that. So there's always going to be those instances where you'll have conflict with other people if you're being truthful and honest in who you are living your life in the correct way that you should be because you can not tell the whole truth and be just very lukewarm in your approach and you'll probably never really have a bunch of conflict with anybody but jesus had something to say about that too you know because you are lukewarm i will spit you out of my mouth <laughs> okay he said that i wish you would be hot or cold of course, you know which direction I take here. I am fully cold or fully hot. I don't exist in the middle. There is no gray area in my life. I will establish what is to be, and then I operate that way. And that can be really difficult for the world to deal with, the people in it that are in my life. That can be sometimes impossible for them to deal with. But that is how I've chosen to be, cold or hot. I will make the decision, and then I will order my life around that decision. And that's how I feel about everything, and that's how I feel about everyone. Now, I'm definitely not saying you should do as I do, 
I'm saying that you should do how Jesus does. So if you're struggling with this and you constantly feel unappreciated, you might take a look at this scripture and the whole book of Matthew in greater detail because you might find some morsels here that will help you separate yourself from the result. And instead, take heart in being genuine. Take heart in having the courage to put yourself out there as you've been made and as you've been led to do. Thank you all for watching this episode. I hope you have a blessed week.